Hey there everybody, it's Mike Delicio with another Solo Mode review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Solo Mode for Judge Dread Helter Skelter using the Dark Judges expansion. This is from designer Martin Wallace and publisher Osprey Games. Judge Dread Helter Skelter is a new version of the Wildlands tactical skirmish game rethemed in the Judge Dread universe. And this first expansion allows you to play the game solo. So let's head over to the table. I'll give you a brief overview on how the game is played. Then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, here we see a setup of the solo game for Judge Dread Helter Skelter. This is going to look a little bit different than the beginning setup of a multiplayer game in that all of the figures are starting out on the board. In the solo game, that's how it works. In the multiplayer game, you're going to be revealing your characters at, pretty much on your own terms. Uh, but here, what ends up happening is to set it up, you remove these multiplayer uh, cards from the map deck and you're going to draw cards, placing out your fragments of reality on the corresponding number that comes up. The only restriction there is that if there's a number that is adjacent to another one, so in other words, if I had already put a fragment here and then 28 came up, I would just skip that one and keep going until all of my fragments are on the board, but they're not in any adjacent spaces. Next, I would draw four map cards and place out the four dark judges that are going to be my opponents. Finally, I will be drawing five more cards and in whatever order I like, putting out my team uh, in those corresponding five cards. So this would be how the game looks at the start. What I need to do is collect five fragments of reality before my entire team gets wiped out. Otherwise, the dark judges win. How do you do that? when there's only five on the board, well, you might notice that there's a neutral colors, teams, fragments of reality there as well. The way it works is that you would collect them as you normally do by spending symbols of a particular uh, character. Three of those symbols of a character, if they're in the same space as a fragment, will collect that fragment. Once you've started collecting them, any time that you can defeat a dark judge, you're going to double the number of fragments of reality you have. So, for example, if you've been able to collect three fragments of reality and then you defeat a dark judge, you will have won the game because you double the number that you started with. So if you had three, now you'll have six and you'll have won the game. Okay? Um, the solo... AI deck is right here. This is the deck of cards that's going to control those dark judges. And it's a relatively simple process. You're going to go first. On your turn, you're going to do exactly as you normally would. You've got your hand of seven cards here. You're going to be playing these cards, really focusing primarily on the symbols. Each symbol for a particular character will allow you to move one space for every symbol on your cards. Some of them also have actions next to them. So on this particular card, I can use this symbol either to move Victor Romanoff, who has that symbol there, is right here. I can spend this card to move him, or if they were in a space with an enemy, I could use it as a brawling uh, action. So, for example, if I wanted to collect this fragment of reality right there, I've got enough cards in my starting hand to do so. I could spend two of these to move, one, two, and then I can spend another three to collect that fragment of reality. So let's say that I did that on my first turn. Now I've got two cards here ready to go for my next turn. Now, on the AI's turn, what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw from this deck and you're gonna be drawing two cards per AI turn. It's gonna show all of the different symbols of the dark judges along the left and you go from top to bottom, kind of going through each one and doing what it tells you to do. So in this case, it shows that Judge Fire is not going to do anything because there's no action sim symbols next to it. Judge Fear here is going to take one movement and one sniping, which is a basically a ranged attack. So Judge Fear is going to go towards the closest enemy and take a ranged attack. Now here's Judge Fear. 
we've got two of my team members within two spaces of them. So in that case, they're gonna go towards the team member that's on the lowest uh, numbered space, which is right here. It's gonna go one space here. It's gonna fire at me. And now if I have a uh, deflect action, like I do right here, basically I could spend that to not take that, uh, that damage, but maybe I'm not worried at this point early in the game. I'm happy to go ahead and take the damage and save this card for something that I could use later. So perhaps I just take one damage off of Lulu Romanoff and now she's got down to two health, okay? So they're gonna do their actions one by one, moving, taking ranged actions. If they're already in the same space as an enemy, doing a brawling action, which you would have to spend cards to play for defense if you've got those cards. And again, you're gonna do two per, oops, two per turn, okay? Just going down here. Now, up in the upper right here, you'll notice that some of these cards have symbols. Those are what you are gonna use if you try to attack them. So if I were to come over here and try to do a brawl action uh, against that Dark Judge, if I flip over the top card of this deck, and if I were to see a fist there, that would block it. But in this case, it didn't. Now, what's different about these Dark Judges that you might notice is that they've got these shields on them. And so the first time you do damage to a uh, Judge, they don't actually take the damage, they just become vulnerable to damage. So let's say I had punched Judge Fear there and it had been a successful melee attack, all that does is flip over the shield. They still have their three health. I would then have to play another successful attack against them to remove one of their uh, health points, all right? And so that's simply how the game's gonna work. You're gonna go back and forth, you taking your turns as normal, hopefully collecting those fragments of reality. And if you're able to defeat a dark judge, you'll double up the number. So if I had one and I was able to defeat them, I would take another one here and now I would have two. Continuing to do that, your team is, you know, almost inevitably going to start getting defeated by these dark judges. And when that happens, you flip them over. And just like in the multiplayer game, if you have a defeated team member, you can start using their symbols um, to collect fragments from other with other characters so that the cards don't become useless to you. Another thing to really quickly go over is that some of these judges have some abilities. So Judge Fear here has the paralyzing aura. Uh, movement actions cost two cards instead of one if you're in the same space as Judge Fear. So if you're in their space and you're trying to get away, instead of spending one card with the symbol of the character, they'd have to spend two, which can be rough. And then Judge Mortis here has the Cloud of Decay, which is characters in the same space as Judge Mortis at the beginning of their turn are going to take a damage unless they can play defense cards against them. All right. So that gives you a pretty basic overview of how the game's going to go. You're either gonna win by collecting six or more of the fragments of reality, or you're gonna lose by having your whole team knocked out before then. Let's head back over to the table and I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea on how Judge Dread Helter Skelter is played solo using the Dark Judges expansion and the rules and the deck of cards that comes along with that. So the first thing I wanna do is talk about some solo benchmarks. These are things I like to consider when looking at the pros and cons of a solo game. Uh, the first thing I like to do is talk about a win-loss condition. Is it a clear win-loss or is it a high score variant? Well, this is a tactical skirmish game, so you definitely have a clear win-loss condition. In the case of the Dark Judges, it's going to be either you get those fragments of reality, the six or more that you need to be successful, or your whole team loses. There's no middle ground there. You win or the Dark Judges win. And for a game like this, it's really the only way I can even imagine it working is to have that clear kind of team against team skirmish feel that you're looking for. So uh, it does that quite well. The setup and teardown is another thing I like to talk about that can oftentimes make a difference on what game you choose to play solo. And this is one that has a little bit uh, of time set up, uh, but really for the experience that you get, I feel like it's a pretty reasonable setup and teardown. You basically pick your team and the, the, I actually like the setup for this game. Now, it's not quite as satisfying as the multiplayer setup because in Wildlands or in um, Judge Dread Helter Skelter, really 
my favorite part of the game is during setup in the multiplayer game where you're choosing where to put your character or where your character is going to kind of pop up and where your fragments of reality are. I love that. Now, you don't get that in the solo game because everything starts out on the board. And so while it's not as satisfying a, a prospect as in the multiplayer game, I still do like kind of seeing where things are going to be. It, it gives you an idea of where you're going to have to go, maybe what you're going to have to focus your, uh, your attention on early on. So the amount of time is fine. It doesn't take terribly long. I mean, you could be up and going in, in 10 minutes maximum. Uh, another thing I like to talk about are the rules. How clear are the rules? And in the case of the Dark Judges expansion here, I, I felt like they were very clear. Um, there's not a whole lot of difference between the multiplayer game and the solo game. The AI cards are very simple to uh, administer, very simple to understand. There really aren't a lot of edge cases, if any, that, that have come up. And so um, anytime that there's two or more characters that you can go towards, you go towards the one in the lowest room. And if there's two characters that you can attack, you're going to go after the one that has the least health remaining. Things that make some common intuitive sense. If you were playing as the Dark Judges, you're obviously going to go after the weaker character. So um, I think that the rules do a really good job. Uh, no real ambiguities to speak of. It's a pretty simple rule set. It's on two sides of one sheet of paper. So uh, no problems there. I also like to talk about the art and components. Now, this is an interesting one because I feel like I might be slightly in the minority in that this theme does very little for me, and so therefore the art doesn't necessarily speak to me. I don't dislike it. I don't think it's off-putting or, or, or poorly done in any way, but I honestly prefer the art and the feel and the aesthetic of Wildlands. The main reason why I sought out to play this version of the game was simply because of this solo mode that came with the Dark Judges. Now, uh, apparently there's going to be a, a larger expansion that's going to be coming for Wildlands in the future that will include solo play. And I think it's going to be uh, slightly different than the, the system here. I'm not sure about that. Um, but the art and components are nice. The, the minis are fantastic. The, the, that pre-wash for someone who doesn't paint their miniatures like me, I think it's great. It helps differentiate them. I do think that the issues that the I had with the components in Wildlands, many of them have been rectified in this. And so although I like the art and the aesthetic of Wildlands better, some of the production issues that I found related to art and components, like the nine and the six being almost unable to tell the difference, that's been taken care of here. I find it easier to differentiate my characters in uh, the uh, Judge Dredd Helter Skelter than I do in Wildlands because I think the wash is, is darker and, and it, it just is easier for me to tell who's who. So I think it's even better in some ways component-wise than in Wildlands, although the art is not my favorite. Uh, the, the IP doesn't do a whole lot for me, so it's kind of a mixed bag for me there. I think the components are better than in Wildlands uh, and, are, and, and are good just taken on its own. The art doesn't have a lot of uh, resonance with me because I haven't really uh, read the, the comics or the, the graphic novels or, or anything along those lines. So the overall solo experience for Judge Dredd Helter Skelter with the Dark Judges expansion. Uh, this is a game that is replicating a skirmish. It's really hard to pull off skirmish games in a solo variant because so much of what you're looking for in a skirmish game is getting in the head of your opponent and being able to kind of figure out what are they thinking. And, and, and uh, you know, a human's not going to act like an AI deck. And, and you feel that more in a skirmish game, I think, than you might in something like a worker placement game or a resource management game. And so while it does a fine job of having a simple to administer AI deck, and it gives you, a, a, I found anyway, a decent challenge, although not too tough, there's still something that's not quite there. Um, it, it doesn't give you that same feeling you're gonna get when you're playing in another player. And that's no fault of the game. That's no fault of the solo mode. That's just the nature of skirmish games with an AI deck, I believe, in general. Um, and so while it does a fine job, I still prefer the game as a multiplayer experience. I still like being able to kind of ambush my opponent by flipping over a card and my character pops up right next to where they are. There, you just 
you lose that in the solo game. And, and I don't know that there's any way to replicate that that I can think of offhand. So while I think it's a fine solo game, it's an enjoyable solo game. And if you're really looking for that kind of tactical skirmish fix, but you don't have an opponent that you can play with um, or against, uh, I think that this is a fine uh, choice for you. I, I do think that if I were going to get it strictly as a solo game, it's right on the edge there. It, 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 it would be tough to completely wholeheartedly recommend strictly as a solo game. And that's why I'm going to give it a seven out of 10. I do recommend it. It does get my seal of approval. Um, but I think it's better as a multiplayer game. I rate both Wildlands and Judge Dredd Helter Skelter higher than that. But for a solo game, I'm going to give it a seven out of 10 and a low, but still there seal of approval. Thank you so much for your time as always, and have a great day.